All right, gang, first of all, thanks for coming to the expert channel and checking out this excerpt clip, if you will, of an asked podcast episode from the recent past. So, you know, it's not a whole episode. Um, whole episodes are available only on the app in the video form. You can listen anywhere you want. Any podcast outlet, listen to the audio version. Not a problem for the video version. If you want to watch the whole thing, get the app. It is literally free to watch on the app. No payment, no subscription required. Go over there, check it out, and I hope you enjoy the clip. Well, already, gang, welcome back once again to the Gutowski Files, starring our very own Stephen Gutowski. He is, you probably get tired of hearing this, but there's new people listening, so we got to tell them too. Lucky Gunner is my recommended trusted provider of freedom seeds for range or defensive use. In stock, good prices, and rocket fast shipping are why I go back again and again. Because of new guidelines, I can't link their site or say it, but you're smart, and you can find it with a simple Google search. Stick it to the man by paying them a visit today. He is the owner and founder over at TheReload.com, TheReload.com, and he joins us today to talk about a pretty interesting case. Stephen, how are you, sir? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm not bad. How Get it out of the way now. How are the Phillies doing? We all want to know. Uh, they're doing great, except for when Taiwan Walker starts, and then it's an automatic loss. So I'm not we're, so we're already happy losing listeners. That. We're already losing listeners. we got to abort. <laughs> we're gaining <laughs> all the Philly fans. That's, That's they, right. They're Absolutely. coming here for their sports updates. All right. So today we are talking about a, an article over at the Reload, written by contributing writer Jake Fogelman, who I take it is now back from vacation. I hope he enjoyed his yes. vacation. Uh, and Actually, he's title... been having a lot of trouble with with flights lately. I, this is a thing. I don't know if you've been hearing yeah. about it. Uh, I guess flying is terrible lately all around that's, the country. And that's what I'm hearing I, as well. Yeah, hasn't affected me on my. I mean, I haven't flown that much this year, but it's affected Jake every single time he's gone anywhere. <laughs> he. He, he got canceled, I think, in your neck of the woods. And he was in Phoenix. Jake and, can't uh, catch a break. I didn't even that to overnight. Terrible. Anyway, the article is in entitled Analysis, the first crack forms in federal machine gun ban. This is a member exclusive. So you, the good people listening to the Kutowski Files, the Active Self-Protection Podcast, get a little peek at something that would cost you money over there. Do consider getting a membership over at the Reload, please. And thank you. So this is uh, an interesting case out of uh, for a Kansas man. Uh, the judge dismissed the case based on, he basically cites Bruin uh, talking about historical analogs. Kind of walk us through this and what does it mean? And as always, I have to caution people that when you see a headline or a story like this, it doesn't mean, okay, now all, you know, fully automatic machine guns are all that legal. That's not the case at all. It's not what yes. this means, but it is good news. Is it not, Stephen? Uh, you know, it's good news if you're, if you're somebody who wants to see uh, the machine gun ban struck down right I mean, it depends on what you what you want right? right um this is a case that specifically involves the the hughes amendment it's called which was an amendment passed to the firearms Owner protection act in 1986 that ended up uh take, modifying the national firearms act of 1934 i hope i'm not boring people too much with this yet but uh the national firearms act is what regulates things like uh, silencers or sound suppressors, short barrel rifles. We talk about it a lot on this show because that's what the Biden administration has tried to use uh, regulatory interpretations of the National Firearms Act to ban uh, you know, modern devices like pistol braces. Uh, but this particular case involves the Hughes Amendment, which, was, which modified the National Firearms Act to ban new sales of fully automatic weapons to civilians. So in 1986, the the federal government essentially modified its gun laws to say you cannot buy under any circumstance as a regular civilian. There are exceptions for certain kinds of licensees or, or what have you, and police, for instance. Um, but nor regular civilians can't can no longer buy new machine guns. You can still buy them if they were previously registered before 1986. Like that's, and this is the reason why machine guns today. If anyone, any of our listeners has ever looked at the pricing of an actual fully automatic civilian legal uh, machine gun, they'll notice that they're insanely expensive, hmm. uh, you know, tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases, depending on the gun. But, uh, you know, something like, like this AR I have behind me here, if you buy a legally registered fully automatic variant of an AR-15 or M16, uh, M4, whatever, uh, it goes from being a you know, $500, basically five or $600 worth of parts in the sort of old military versions of these guns to costing you probably $15,000, $20,000 because of this law that basically says you can't 
bring you can't sell any new ones after right. 1986. So uh, that's what we're talking about here. And this is where, um, you know, it's, I guess, more relevant to modern times. This law gets used a lot. And this case, I think, is an example of what, uh, with what, what people call Glock switches. If you've watched the news about crime in the United States, one of the things you've probably heard in the last 10 years or so is the appearance of Glock switches, which are essentially uh, parts that modify semi-automatic handguns, you know, Glocks generally, uh, to be capable of automatic fire, right? There's, it's a part that you can put on your gun and it'll make it fully automatic. There's almost none of these that you can buy legally, but lots if of criminals I, use them. If I can interject just really quick, I, I've shot a fully automatic Glock from someone who had the license. They brought it to one of our conferences a few years back. Yeah. It's fun, right? It's fun to do. It's, it's a kick in the pants. It's a giggle switch and all that kind of thing. Sure. It also immediately makes your gun kind of useless. Um, if you're mm -hmm. shooting a clock in full auto, you're going to hit something, right? But hitting what you're maybe. aiming at is, is I mean, maybe one or two of those rounds will go where you want them to, but it's really difficult right. to control. Have you, you fired one before, right? Oh, sure. Fully automatic handguns are, uh, they're not designed for accuracy. That's, right. that's for sure. Uh, I mean, that's a common problem with all sorts of automatic fire is you lose accuracy. Uh, that's one of the trade-offs when you're, when you're using automatic fire for any kind of gun, but especially something like a handgun. Uh, of course, as I'm sure you've experienced in your job as law with in law enforcement, criminals accuracy is not a high priority for many of them. Mm -hmm. um, so th they've taken to Glock switches. They've become a popular thing. It seems like the person in this case, that's what he, had. one of the guns he had was a Glock 33, very strange, this guy has had weird taste in firearms. Okay. I would say that much going into it. He had a, a Glock 33, which is a 357 Glock with a Glock switch. Apparently, uh, it was or it was some sort of fully automatic version mm -hmm. of a, of this Glock 33. Uh, and then he had a uh, fully automatic version of an AR, chambered in 300 blackout. So, for people who know anything about firearms, it's just a weird combination. Not what you. Yeah, it really is. It's not what you would normally see. ARs are mostly chambered in 5.56 or 2.23. Uh, and um, Glocks don't usually, keep, most people don't own a Glock 33 or nope. like a 357 Glock. Most people have nine millimeters, you know, Glock 19 or 17 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a strange combination of guns. But the bottom line with this case uh, is that the judge found these charges against the uh, defendant here were unconstitutional um, as applied to the defendant. So basically just these specific charges against this person, because uh, as you noted earlier, does not now mean that machine guns are legal for everyone and the NFA right. is overturned. That's not exactly what's going on here. This is an as applied challenge. This is a fairly narrow holding. Now the implication could be pretty significant. We're going to talk more at length with uh, a gun rights lawyer who handles NFA cases on over on our podcast, uh, our next interview podcast that comes out. So we'll get into some of the perhaps implications of this, but um, essentially he found that the, these are just possession charges. So this person was not charged with any other sort of crime. He wasn't charged with using these guns. Transporting and, or distributing or yeah, whatever. Yeah. 